guys, it's Jason back with you on Rediscover the 80s. Thanks so much for tuning in today. And man, I've got a haul to uh, pass along. Uh, you know how much I love going to thrift stores. And uh, it's just so hard in uh, the day and age that we live uh, trying to stay away. You know, you have to be safe. You've got to wear your mask. And uh, it's uh, really a fine line between your physical health and your mental health of staying home all the time, being cooped up with three kids. Uh, it's it, it's such a balance, but uh, I am going out uh, every once in a while to thrift stores, and we've hit a few uh, new ones recently that have not been to before, and uh, got a fun haul that I wanted to pass along to you. Uh, first, I'm a board game fan. I love getting board games, especially when they're at a good price. And a lot of times at Goodwill, you'll find a board game uh, that's a good price. We went to this new thrift store. Got this one for a dollar. Tribond. You guys remember Tribond? Uh, this was a late 80s, early 90s game. Uh, copyrights actually date back to, I think, 89. But I re mainly remember playing it in the early 90s at a friend of mine's house. And uh, it's got a... It's basically a... Uh, three things that you have to find out something in common and you uh, as you you know go through the board you're guessing what these three things have in common uh it's a really fun game we were just going through the cards last night we weren't really playing the game but you know what does uh, tootsie hook and rain man have in common well dustin hoffman of course uh things like that and then there's just like little fun things uh as well uh, found that for a dollar. Was so excited uh, to see that. You know I collect the books. You know you've seen uh, books uh, on this page. I think I've s showed you this one before. This was a McDonald's book. Uh, there was two or three in the collection. Fievel's Boat Trip. Gave one away uh, this Christmas. Found another one. So that was fun. Uh, the kid up the street when I was growing up had a Teddy Ruxpin. And I was always curious about it. We had seen it a couple of times. I was too old to kind of be into that sort of thing. Uh, he was a, a couple years younger than me. And uh, never really got into the Teddy Ruxpin type world. But for, the books were 10 for a dollar, a dime a piece. So, uh, you know, you can't pass up stuff like this when you find it. So I found three. Teddy Ruxpin books, The uh, Mushroom Forest, The Lullabies Part 2, and this one's a hardbound book, The Airship. Uh, really cool. These are, you know, probably late 80s, I would assume. I don't, actually, mid 80s. 85 copyright on the hardbound book. And these books. 88 for that one 86 so mid to late 80s for Teddy Ruxpin uh, obviously the cassettes there's cassettes that go with them to put in uh, Teddy Ruxpin to read along with you but you know these are fun it's nostalgia and for a dime you're not going to pass that up alright what's one we going to do next how about an old Scooby Doo book from 1988 the story is The Mystery of the Strange Paw Prints. And this immediately popped to me. You know, it's the classic Scooby-Doo, Where Are You artwork. Um, of course, being in the 80s, uh, it was an easy purchase for me. And uh, some really great artwork in here. Just that classic cartoon look. And uh, going through the book, I'm anxious to uh, go through that with my daughter, actually. Um, how about this one? Now, I'm a big collector of the book in records or book in cassette tapes. Um, little combo that we used to get back in the day. And I've uh, been building a collection over the past probably year or two years, really. Uh, mainly the ones that I remember uh, having. There's a, a couple He-Man stories I remember having. There's a Scooby-Doo one I'm still looking for, but... It kind of snowballed into more. I've got Star Wars, Gremlins, uh, even She-Ra, uh, book and records or book and cassettes. This one was just the book. I unfortunately did not have the record, so I'm going to have to look for that. But check this out. 
Rocky's Book of Sportsmanship. <laughs> See the pictures, hear the story, read the book from Kid Stuff Records. A lot of them are the Kid Stuff Records books. And in the back, there's the back cover. This is where you'd, you know, pop in the record to keep with the book. And um, uh, I had never seen this one before. There's a lot on this first page here that intrigues me. There is uh, some Pac-Man, Looney Tunes, of course, Masters of the Universe. Uh, I've seen some Care Bears, McDonald's, Atari. Oh, I would love to get some Atari books. Dukes of Hazard, yes. Donkey Kong. James Bond, yes. Uh, Barbie and Friends. I've seen some of these, but not all of them. And this, you know, look at this uh, picture here, Rocky. Uh, that's pretty much the only picture of Rocky in the entire book. And I'm anxious to hear the record to see if, uh, you know, Rocky narrates this. You get somebody, I'm sure it's not Sylvester Stallone, but, you know, you get somebody to go through kind of the rules of the game and uh, sportsmanship stuff, you know, laughing at uh, other kids who may be struggling with something and arguing, you know. Uh, this came out 1983, but the cover, I was just intrigued with it. Great stuff. Uh, I've shown you guys, if you uh, have been following me, the uh, what we call the sticker inside books. Uh, there's one for Garfield that I found. I've also done one for Bigfoot that has that uh, 12 collector stickers inside. Unfortunately, yeah, the stickers were long gone. But I love collecting Garfield and imagining Garfield in school. Kind of, uh, you know, in a, what do you call it? In a morphic. Uh, pretending to be a human, nonetheless. Uh <laughs> I thought that would be fun. And, you know, again, when you're paying a dime a book, hard to pass up stuff like this. That was great. Also found a Digest, World's Finest. This one dates back to 1981, February 1981. Uh, I don't have too many of these uh, Digest comics, but uh, I do have several G.I. Joe, because I collect the G.I. Joe comic books. Uh, but this one was fun. It's a little taped up and worse for wear. But again, if you're finding stuff like this for less than a dollar, you've got to pick it up. And it still ap appears to have all of its pages and everything. So you can read along at least with the comic. Uh, yeah, that one actually was at a, another store. I paid a dollar for that one. So, you know, um, old comics and especially these digest sizes... I just don't see a lot of, so picking that up was great. Now, uh, finally, I've been uh, collecting more VHS tapes as of lately. I thank uh, a lot of that to Adam Pope and uh, Chad Young. We've done a couple uh, podcasts together on VHS tapes and collecting and memories, and we're actually doing a new podcast on the Retro Network called Rental Return. Tales from the Video Store, which I'm producing. Adam is interviewing uh, all these people that um, used to work at video rental stores back in the day, and it's been really fun to listen to their stories and put that uh, podcast together. But uh, I do, every once in a while, see some uh, VHS tapes that I simply love based on the cover art. And uh, I'm going to show these all three together, hopefully here, without dropping them. Yes. These were my introduction to James Bond, essentially. Uh, these three movies. View to a Kill was the one of the first ones I remember watching uh, actually at a friend's house on HBO. So it would have been around, you know, 85, 86. But these are the old uh, CBS video collection. Uh, CBS Fox. And you just don't see... You know, covers like that. This is what you, you know, when you're in the rental store, you're looking at the covers to choose movies, essentially. And as a kid, you're looking at covers to kind of just open your horizon to different uh, genres and movies. It's all based on the cover. That's what you're seeing in the video rental stores. And seeing these ones, you just don't see these uh, specific covers anymore where you hired an artist almost and had them do these awesome 
paintings or drawings that became your cover art. And uh, as a James Bond collector, you know, uh, I just had to pick up these tapes. Because these ones from the 80s, well, I think Moonraker was, uh, let's see, when was Moonraker? 79, maybe? And actually, I think Spy and Love Me was maybe 77. But I know View to the Kill was around 85. Um, those were my introduction to James Bond, and I had to pick those up, uh, especially based on the covers. Finally, <laughs> the Muppet Babies. Uh, three episodes on this one. Meet the Muppet Babies. Baby Piggy and Giant Bubble. What's a Gonzo? Uh, is in this tape, and uh, it's a video storybook hosted by and narrated by Kermit the Frog. Three Muppet Baby stories never seen on TV. Wow, I just now noticed that. Uh, so this must be like, uh, you know, based on the animation in the cartoons from the popular uh, cartoon series. But they uh, used uh, Kermit. So maybe these came with these books on the back, this tape. So you read the books and read along with Kermit as you're watching the tape. I have not watched the tape yet. Uh, <laughs> to uh, video storybook. Interesting. So I have just now noticed that. So I'll have to see if there's an actual book, to, three books that go along with this, or maybe one book that had all three stories in. So, um, yeah, I had to pick that up too. So there's a recent thrift store haul. Uh, like I said, I'm going out every once in a while, and instead of doing a couple of things at a time, I figure just throwing my whole haul up there will be a, a better way to show off everything that I'm finding at the thrift stores and antique malls nearby. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you will like, hope you will share, hope you will subscribe. <laughs> I've got subliminal messages now behind me uh, being over here on YouTube. Uh, so, Thanks so much for watching. Uh, more stuff to come. Hope you will subscribe if you are not and uh, share the video uh, maybe on your social media if you liked it. So anyway, thanks for watching. Jason for Rediscover the 80s. We'll catch you next time.